to father thank you for opening our eyes to the things you've died to give that jesus died to give us lord we receive revelation and understanding and we will perform we will perform all we'll live our life we will enjoy it in abundance to its fullness till it overflows thank you father and we will overflow it to others in jesus mighty name we have prayed and everybody said amen can you put your hands together for the lord just give him the praise Glory to God. Okay, we want to go to the next course because of time. So we're going to the next course. Praise the Lord. So if you, enjoy, you have your man now, it's chapter 2. Healing and health, our covenant rights. Matthew chapter 15, verse 26. Healing and health, our covenant rights. Hallelujah. Is it in your manual? Okay, good. It's better you write inside your manual, write, underline. You need to see my manual. It's, it's torn. My first torn. I have many. Tear it, write it, just eat it. After the school, you can buy extra ones. Praise the Lord. Uh, you can even buy one for training people. I don't like, you can come and sit here, okay? You don't have to sit on the, yes, please sit here. Ah, man of God, see, sit now, sit there here. Hallelujah. That's one of our zonal pastors that came in. God bless you, sir. Okay. Matthew chapter 15, verse 26. Let's roll. Can you give us a scripture? Now, it's the story of the Syrophoenician woman. She came to Jesus um, and with a daughter that was sick. She was not a Jew, okay? She was from Syria, Syria and Phoenicia. Let's not go into the theology. The important thing is that she had a child that was sick, that was oppressed by demons. The sickness was caused by demons. And she came to Jesus and for days... She followed, trying to get the attention of Jesus. And many times, Jesus, Jesus did not give her face, you know, if we use Nigerian language. Then, <laughs> you know, some of you think Jesus was an easy pastor. I will write a book. The title of book is, If Jesus Were Your Pastor. When as an assistant pastor, he turn and call you Satan. People think we are mean. You never jam anything. If Jesus were your pastor, turn and called assistant pastor, Satan. Get thee behind me. That is two minutes after commending him. Guy, this guy, you a dangerous. Why did you get that revelation? In fact, it's direct, downloaded direct from heaven. VTU. Two minutes later, the assistant pastor. Has now is now the revealer of all things. He gave another revelation. <laughs> Unfortunately, he didn't verify the source. Like some of you that like to copy and paste on social media. Mm. Opiaya the thing. Get thee behind me, what? You know, you are because you are English people, you don't know what Satan means. Accuser, adversary, opposer. After saying you are the rock, next minute you are Satan. <laughs> that shows you that the Christian life is not an independent life. You need to be connected to God. Regularly. You know, in security, you must be connected. If you miss, if you miss your connection, eh, one moment of disconnection from it, you are dead. Or the person you are protecting is what? 
That's why in war, the first thing they cut is communication. It's either they cut it or they scramble it or they confuse it. So you'll be getting the wrong information. You are dead. Praise the Lord. I will write that book. Pastor Nam, they remind me. If Jesus were your pastor. So in this scripture, Jesus, in the scripture said, it is not fair for the children to, children's bread to be thrown to the dog. So that's what Jesus told the woman when the woman was asking for healing. He said, it is not right for us to take the children's bread and throw it to dogs. So Jesus was implying that healing was the children's what? Bread. <laughs> Should I ask you something? Healing is the children's bread. What is the food for adults? You know, many of us have been dwelling on children's bread. Oh, Lord, heal me. Remember, healing is the children's bread. You are 77 years in Christianity. I'm still looking for milk. That's why you are not strong to stand opposition. Tell your neighbor, I'm growing up. So Jesus told her, it is not fair to take the children's bread and give it to the dogs. And the woman said, even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the table. And Jesus said, I have never seen this kind of faith. You know, faith is tenacity. Someone say tenacity. tenacity. It's not like the, the, the father of the epileptic that said, I believe, I believe. Oh, I don't believe. Even his faith was epileptic. On and off. No, faith is tenacity. Someone say tenacity. Someone wrote a book. The title of the book is Bulldog Faith. You know, a bulldog, eh, have you ever seen a bulldog? There's a way a bulldog is, they has very big nose. And the way the mouth is shaped, do you know why it's shaped like that? So it can bite you and be breathing. Most dogs cannot hold the bite for long. But the, the mouth of the bulldog is shaped in such a way, you see the way the nose went. It can Pagidogi hold you and be breathing. You know? That is how to walk in faith. Someone say bulldog faith. Faith is when you hold on and refuse to what? Give up. You are feeling symptoms, but you insist by his stripes have been what? Healed. By his stripes have been what? Healed. You keep saying it until you see it. That's what that woman had. Bulldog faith. Jesus said, I've never seen this kind of faith in Israel. He said, woman, go. Your child is free from what? Your affliction. And see what the scripture says. And her daughter was made well what? That same hour. So God is not the one postponing your healing. You are the one. If you will hold on to God, are you hearing me? You may be watching me from anywhere in the world. Tell yourself, today is my day for a miracle. Today. Somebody say, today is my day for a miracle. Say it again, today is my day for a miracle. Say it a third time, today is my day for a miracle. You will get it. And everybody said, amen. Okay. Um, Chibike. Hallelujah. Okay. So let's go now. Wow. So in this scripture, Jesus refer, inferred that healing and wholeness was the bread of the children of the covenant. That was the Israelites. And it was not for dogs, the Gentiles. And he meant what he said. So he had to take the woman becoming a child of the covenant by her faith to get something from Jesus. After all, their father, how did their father get it? Your father Abraham, the Bible says he believed and it was counted to him as what? Righteous. So the woman connected to the lineage by faith. So you see, an unbeliever that believes in a man of God can get healed faster than a believer that doesn't believe. This was an unbeliever. But she connected by faith. How did Abraham become a believer? By faith. So faith is critical in receiving from God. Faith is the characteristics of children of God. So if you are a child of God, you should walk by what? 
faith and not by what? You should tell your neighbor you should walk by faith and not by sight. So you have to take the woman becoming a child of the covenant by her faith to get something from Jesus. Today, as many as believe in his name, he gives the authority, the legal right to become and be addressed as God's sons, no longer as Gentiles. Hallelujah. That's John chapter 1 verse 12. Also today, by virtue of the new birth, we are the offspring of Christ. And since Christ is Abraham's seed, we are Abraham's seed too. And heirs of the promises of God to Abraham. Everything that belongs to Christ and Abraham now belongs to us. Someone say, everything that belongs to Christ, belongs to Abraham. And by reason of being Christ's son, being a Christian, being born again, everything promised Abraham and everything promised Jesus is mine. Somebody say, it's mine. So let's look at Galatians chapter 3, verse 13 and 14. He says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is anyone that hangs on a tree. That in Christ Jesus, the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So there are so many things that have been promised to us by God, promised to us by the spirit of the lord how do we receive someone say by our faith someone say by our faith so as children of abraham we have an inheritance of blessings as we obey god's command if you look at deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 1 to 15 there you go back and read it in details but let's maybe read one or two verses if you can project it deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 1 and 15 1 to 15, I mean. It has so many blessings. So Christ has redeemed us from the cross. When we got born again, Jesus set us free from every cause. What is cause? Empowerment to fail. What is cause? Things that bring stagnation, bring sickness, bring disease. I hear what I'm saying. But when you got born again, you were set free. Someone said, I was set free from every cause. The blood of Jesus silenced. You see, the key to causes is the blood. Bring the blood, every cause is revoked. So when Jesus shed his blood, the power of curses were broken off our life and everybody said amen. amen. And curses manifest in different ways. They manifest as late marriage. They manifest as mysterious sickness. They manifest as sicknesses running in the family. All those things you call familial illness like hypertension, diabetes, cancer. All those things, they are manifestation of curses. What is a curse? A curse is a punishment for walking in iniquity, walking in sin, for family sins. Anytime a father sins, he provokes a curse from God. Anytime a family begins to sin, they provoke a curse from God. And the thing about curses is that they run down the line. That's what the Bible was saying in Isaiah 53 verse 5, that Jesus was bruised for iniquity. Iniquity is the sins of the fathers. It provokes curses. And some people are suffering because of the iniquities of their fathers. There are families that cancer is running in, there are families that diabetes or hypertension is running in. But if you're born again, you have been free from that cause. Someone say, I have been redeemed from every cause of the law. He said, you are redeemed from the cause. Why? Because Jesus became a cause for you when he hung on what? The cross. And that's not the end of the story. He said he did this so that the blessings of what? Abraham may come upon what? The Gentiles. That we may receive the promises of the spirit through what? Faith. So there's a channel that is created by our believing God. Believing his word. Becoming his children. Now the same spirit that came upon Abraham to bring all those blessings of health, of life. I never saw where they said Abraham was sick. And he lived a very old age. And even the part of his body that was not working when he met God, which was his sexual organs, came alive. In fact, became hyperactive. When the guy was true with Sarah, he married an African woman. You know, African women are hot. 
and she, he, she gave him six children. <laughs> Ketura was a black woman. <laughs> the man was still active. Okay, before then, he, another black woman. Hagar. So while the white woman was still warming up, two, the first black woman collected seed. And after they cleared that one, the white woman gave one. Forgive me, you know we're online. <laughs> but I'm telling you the scripture. The traditional Egyptians were black. Most of the invasions, it was now the Arabs that came in that caused the mix-up of colors. That's why you see a lot of black pharaohs. Then after that, he married Keturah, another black woman. Barista. Or when you had the thing, six. <laughs> A man that his body was considered what? Dead. Somebody said the blessing is on my life. Everything that is dead in my life comes alive in the name of Jesus. So as Abraham's children, we have an inheritance of blessings. As we obey his covenant. So I think you should just go back and read Deuteronomy 28, okay? There are so many of them. He said that you are blessed in the, in the city. You'll be blessed in the city. You'll be blessed in the country. You'll be blessed when you go out. You'll be blessed when you come in. The fruit of your body will be blessed. The fruit of your ground will be blessed. Your basket will be blessed. What does it mean, blessed? Empower to prosper. Life is to succeed. That's what blessing means, okay? So because of time, let's just run. Part of that blessing, he said you shall be blessed in the fruit of your body. That means you will not be sick. Your body will be empowered to be strong and to be productive. So if you read Deuteronomy chapter 28, and that's my assignment to you, go back and read it from verse 1 to 15. You will see a lot of these blessings. Now all through the old covenant, we encounter each such promises of blessings, of obedience of the covenant. They include Exodus 15, 26. Exodus 23, verse 25 and 26. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 12 to 16. Then Deuteronomy 28, verse 1 to 15. Go back and read the scriptures, but let me just read Exodus 23, verse 25 and 26. We've read the other one, so let's read this one. It said, you shall serve the Lord your God. He will bless your bread and he will bless your what? water. He said, I will take sickness away from the midst of what? Thee. And there shall not be barren, nor cast a young in thy land. The number of your days are we what? Fulfill. So one of the blessings of serving God is that he will take sickness. Somebody say, God is taking sickness away from me. That's one of the blessings of the covenant. If you're born again, he's taking it out of you. That's one level. The second level is, is when he said from the midst of you, the, from your family, nobody will be sick. That's Acts chapter 16 verse 31. You and your household shall be what? Safe. You can kick sickness permanently away from your family. But he was talking to the Israelites. So he was talking to a whole nation. So you can, you know, you can have eradication of a certain, I think we had eradication, we're talking about eradication of polio. Doc, is it not? But we had eradication of smallpox. Has anybody here ever suffered smallpox? Do you even know what it is? It was eradicated. That's how you can eradicate sickness from your family. If we take this school seriously and every one of us goes back and begins to supply healing and health, we can eradicate sickness from Enugu. John G. Lake did it in Washington, Spokane. He, he was healing the sick. So many people were healed. Then he raised what he called divine healing technicians. I think there were about 1,000 divine healing technicians. <laughs> you know this thing we are running is basic school, an advanced school. We are going to healing school professional. I think by next year, by Yakobo. <laughs> Divine healing technicians. He trains you for 30 days, then he releases you. Do you know where they send you to? To people that are terminally ill. And you are not permitted to come back until the person either get healed or dies. Don't come back. <laughs> so when you leave, reach there, you will lay hand, lay leg. I watched where a man of God was head booting demons. Mm. Head boot. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Don't 
don't think it's all these local prophets. Oh, it's Pastor Chris. Oh. What is this man doing? I said, no, nah, there are levels. <laughs> I read the scripture one day that a king sits on his throne and with his eye he chases away what? Evil. I started casting out demons with my eye. There are things in your Bible, you don't read them. Have you read it in your Bible? A king sits on his throne and with his eye he chases away what? Evil. You just come and talk. You just need to look at you. They have carried you. <laughs> you just see yourself in the air. Jail. So I just look at demons. I went somewhere, they were doing deliverance. The guy was manifesting. Eating grass. I had so many demons. I don't know. He was a cultist. He would act like a bear. He would act like a goat. He would act like... And the people were there were speaking English. You know, you demon, you are coming out in Jesus' name. Some people say, after 30 minutes, when they are tired, they say, you have left. You have left. When the guy is still manifesting, say, you have left. The guy is still there. I was just looking for space. Of course, I was not invited. Just to make eye contact with the guy. I just made eye contact. I said, you know me. I know you. And you know I have authority over you in Jesus' name. Out. Tumble, 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 tumble. Roll, roll, roll. Gymnastics. When he finished, he left and the guy became calm. Did you read that place? He said, and the man was, the insane man was calm and in his right mind. The guy was calm. Big guy. I said, go and give him something to eat. I called the pastor, clean him up, give him something to eat. Somebody say, I have authority. Say, I'm a king. I'm in power. Ever since then, that's how I chase out. And that's how I know whether they are still there. I look. <laughs> I have a second revelation for that one. My body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Jesus lives in me. And my Jesus, the Jesus that lives in me is not the one that went to the cross. He's the risen Lord. When John saw him, the Bible says his face was like the sun shining at his highest. And there were flames of fire from his eyes. No demon can stand those fires. So I open my eyes so that Jesus can look through my eye. And the demons did. <laughs> Someone say, you have something in your Bible. Tell your neighbor, start reading it. Simple. So that's how... I have two ways I check if demons have left. I have, I have an x-ray machine in my hand. I, a scanner. I scan. Or robots had one. If he touches you, his own has facts and figures. But they are gifts of the spirit. His own tells the name of the demon, the demons, how many they are, and their names. Scanner. The Bible says, covert earnestly what? Spiritual. Why are we saying it? Not to boast so that you can covet them. So I have a scanner in my hand. I check. I can sense demons. I smell demons. I sense them. There are those that see. I don't see as much as others. I, I smell and I sense. I, I scan. Then I also have a scanner in my eye. If you are there, it will manifest. So. Something is coming on you this season. You see, some of you are going to go home and start doing strange things. Amen. After this week, you will not be normal. Amen. I say you will not be normal. Amen. I say you will no longer be normal. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. This is not a teaching meeting. This is an impartation meeting. Paul said, I long to come to you that I might impart some spiritual gift to the end that you will be what? Established. Just lift your hands and say, Lord, I receive. I receive grace. I receive wisdom. I receive gifts of the Spirit. To enforce your kingdom wherever I go. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. So, all through the Old Testament, we encounter all these promises of healing. Now, to bless means to empower, to prosper. I've said that. Now, in Christ Jesus, 
not only do we inherit the blessings of, Abraham, of obedience, but we are set free from the causes of disobedience. If you look at Deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 15 to the end, there are so many causes of disobedience. If you also look at Deuteronomy chapter 27 verse 26, we'll see also other causes of disobedience, which includes what? Sickness. But let's see if we'll read one or two. Deuteronomy 27 verse 26, very fast. We need to wrap it up here. Deuteronomy 27 verse 26. Can you help me? Can you help me? Cursed is he who does not support and give assent to the words of this law to do according to them as the rule of his life. No, give me, whenever you give me the first scripture, give me in King James again. So, God was telling them that when they don't obey the word that he was teaching them, the law he gave them, they will be cursed. And there were so many types of curses. Curses he who does not support and, oh, you have to give me amplified. Give me King James. Always give me King James first, okay? Hallelujah. Okay, just leave it. Go to Deuteronomy 28, verse 15. Deuteronomy 28, verse 15 to 22. Glory to God. If you look at Deuteronomy 28 verse 15, you will see different types of sicknesses that are causes of the law. They are the consequences of disobeying God. So, let's look at some. And thou shalt remember that thou was... No. Sorry. Are you there? Cost shall thou be in the city, cost shall thou be in the field. That was what God was telling them. Yes, verse 17. Very fast. Cost shall be all thy basket and thy stores. You see, this is now the opposite of the blessings. Yes, 18. Cost shall be the fruit of your body. You remember, he said, Blessed shall be the fruit of your body. Now God is reversing this. Cost shall be your land and the increase of thy kind and the flocks of their sheep. It causes an empowerment to fail. When that force comes, it destroys everything you are doing. So whenever you disobey God, you open yourself to curses. That was what was happening to the children of Israel. So they were, God gave them laws and when they broke it, they were open to this. Cut shall be the fruit of thy body. Cut shall be the fruit of thy land and the increase of thy kind and the flocks of thy sheep. Yeah, next verse. Cut shall thou be when thou comest in. You see, reversal of every blessing. Cut shall thou be when thou what? You know, if you read Deuteronomy 28 at the beginning, he said, what, how did this blessing go? He said, if you shall diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, to obey his words. He said, the Lord shall lift you up above the kingdoms of the earth and cause his blessings to come upon you and to what? Overtake you. So now, he started listing the blessings. But now he said, but if you will not obey these commands and do what you feel like, causes will come upon you. So the Israelites had two things. If they obeyed God, they walked in the blessing. If they disobeyed God, they walked in the curses. And the unfortunate thing about most of these curses, they were generational to the third and fourth generation. So people were suffering sicknesses because of things that had been done by their fathers. But when Jesus died on the cross, he delivered us from the curse of the law. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. So whether it is the curse of the law for the Israelites or the curses walking in your father's house, he has set you free. Someone say, I've been set free. Someone say, I've been set free. So they were, he delivered us from all this. There are specific ones I would like to go to. Can you look at verse? Have we gone to verse? Two? Okay, go to 20. Let's just move very fast. Please, 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 please. I think I need to be reading myself so that um, you guys are slowing me down. Okay, fine. Look at this verse verse 21 the Lord will make the pestilence to cleave unto thee now he's talking about these ones are now sickness that are part of the cause until thou be consumed from the land whither thou goest what is pestilence the type of thing that started in 20 plagues like what Ebola like uh, Corona God said if you disobey this thing will come and wipe out your whole nation it can wipe out a whole nation 
there are nations that have gone off the map of the earth because of sickness. Verse 22. Let's also see that some sicknesses that are part of the course. Okay, can you give me in NIV? I'll read in King James, but give me in NIV over there. The Lord will strike you with wasting disease, with fever and inflammation, with scorching heat and drought, with blight and mildew, which will plague you until you what? Perish. That's what God would. That's the cause that God brought upon the Israelites if they disobeyed. Let's move. Let's look at some other ones. Verse 27. He said, The Lord will smite you with the botch of Egypt and with the the emerald and with the scab and with the each whereof thou can be what healed so give it to us in niv so that we know what all those botch and scab and emeralds are. <laughs> he said the lord will afflict you with the boils of egypt so boils are not from god with tumors they are not from god cancers tumors not from god and not for god's people someone say not for me not for my people. Festering swords. Swords that are discharging. I had a testimony that one of the times I came to HQ, a guy had a sinus. A sinus is, you know, a wound that connects to another cavity and pulse discharges from it. And in that service, it closed and it was healed. Can we give Jesus some praise? <laughs> Discharging sores. And the itch. Itching diseases, skin diseases of all sorts. Vaginal itching. You are set, being set free right now in the name of Jesus. He said from this, that which that cannot be cured. So there are some that cannot be cured. That's the cause God brought upon them. So you need to know what Jesus delivered us from. So you see that sickness is a curse from the law. If you were born again, Christ has redeemed you from the curse of what? The law. So you should not be walking in sickness. Tell your neighbor, you should not be walking in sickness. Verse 28. He said, the Lord will smite thee with madness and blindness and astonishness of heart. So part of the cause of disobedience was what? Madness. And blindness. And confusion of mind. If you are born in, you have been set free from these things. And everybody say amen. amen. So even if it's running in your family, you are free now in the name of Jesus. Amen. If you go down, in fact, it's amazing that the cause is there. Are almost like three times the blessings. Look at verse 59. He said, Then the Lord will make thy plagues wonderful. Can you imagine wonderful plagues? <laughs> be giving me an IV. I have King James now, so be giving me an IV. And of long, uh, and the plagues of thy seeds, even great plagues, and of long continuance. And saw sickness and of long continuance. Can you imagine? That's Corona. You know, WHO, they are telling us that this thing will be like malaria. That it is not going. Look at it. It says, the Lord will send fearful plagues on you and your what? Descendants. Harsh and prolonged what? Disasters. And severe and lingering what? Illness. These are the causes of disobedience. That's what they create. And many of our families that have worked, because what are these? These causes who are breaking God's law. One of, the, one of the law of God is that you shall have no God's word beside, before me. So you see in Africa, we have triggered causes. That's why I have mysterious sicknesses running in families. Praise the Lord. But today, you are receiving grace to go and break it in the name of Jesus. I say you are receiving grace to go and break it in the name of Jesus. He said, moreover, he will bring upon thee all the diseases of Egypt, which thou was afraid of. It's not good to be God's enemy. All the diseases of Egypt that you are afraid of. I'm in verse, verse 60 now. 
And also, see this one. He said, which thou were afraid of, and they will cleave to you. That means they won't even go. That's what happens when we disobey God. And we have families that these things are cleaving to. Also, every sickness and every plague, which is not written. You know, when I used to read these things so many years ago, that I, I, medically I can identify most of the sicknesses in the world here. But I told God there's no HIV here. Well, uh, should I show you where HIV is? He said, the Lord will bring upon you every kind of sickness and disaster not recorded what in this book until you are what? Destroyed. So there are many that are still manufacturing. God made provision for them. You know, there, in law, there are some gray areas. Uh, gray areas. Undeclared, you know, some things you have not declared. That is why we must teach our communities to obey God, to honor God, to serve God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That, that Ebola did not destroy Nigeria is the prayer of sins. It entered, the, it was arrested. And then some sacrificial doctors, God bless people like Dr. Adedovo, that held on to that man from Liberia and said, you are going nowhere. She died, but we all got saved. You must learn to sacrifice like that. But there's a higher life. You have eternal life. If they are like that, Ebola will just die. John G. Lake, <laughs> they were healing people in the midst of plagues. In fact, at the time, they were, the government employed their church members to be burying people because the church members don't fall sick. They don't catch the thing. They were paying them $1,000 per corpse. That church became very rich. They are immune. They don't catch the thing. $1,000. <laughs> In those days. EWK trained the church that for 25 years there was no sick person in the church. John G. Lake shut down a hospital in Spokane. You know, when they say that Spokane, if you read God's general, they say it became the healthiest city in the world. The city was given an award as the healthiest city because of a man. And those 1,000 divine healing technicians, he released them. They say in a period of about two or three years, they had healed over 10,000 people. So, you see, that's why I need to train you. Because if it's only me, maybe I will heal 1,000. But when I release you, Kamboro, Ekwensu, a boss on Enugu. And then will become the healthiest city in this nation in the name of Jesus. A hospital, I think it was St. Mary's Hospital, shut down because of no patients. When I was in secondary school, after reading that book in SS1, I came back from holiday, JS3 holiday, and I saw people lying in the sick bay everywhere. And I said, Lord, these people should give me the contract to empty the sick bay. That's how my healing ministry started. And the Lord said, why not? I said, no, Najoko. <laughs> and every night he came, why not? Why not? Why not? Why? I couldn't sleep. After a time, I said, has God ever been on your case before? I had to call my friend Toben Nume. I said, please, let's go. We started going to the sick bay every break time to discharge patients. Come back. Okay, then we didn't even use to lay hands. We didn't even know you were meant to lay hands. We just pick one scripture. All these scriptures we are sharing, I was shown share healing scripture, and share with the person. And say, do you believe? Because the channel is faith. Someone say faith. That's how that Syrian woman received. We are just waiting for the person to say, yes, I believe. That's our, our, our what do you call it? That's our, our cue. Our cue. We we'll just agree with him and rebuke that sickness. And there was nobody we prayed for, as God is my witness, that we saw there the next day. Even those that had skin diseases. And I was in SS1. You are too old to be used by God. See ancestors here. SS1. 14 years. We kept doing it. At the time, these patients were too much. We started coming break time and after school. Break time and after school. One day we came there. 
So every day in the morning when we wake up, we pray, meditate on one healing scripture. I didn't know you, you need to lay hands. I didn't have any anointing in those days. But I had one understanding from Kenneth Hagin. He says, God says it. I believe it. That word settles it. I wrote it on the fly leaf of my Bible. If God has said it, I believe it. That is settled. So I'll pick a scripture, meditate, you know, when it catches fire in my heart, that's what I'll share with them that day. Once I finish sharing, faith will rise in their heart. I'll hold hands with them and pray for them. And they were all healed. One day we went there, one after school, and there was no sick person there. And we were angry. Because we had been digging, cooking to come and release. Nothing. We went to the nurse. Where are all the sick people? Why don't you have sick people? We came here to heal the sick. And she smiled and said, are you not happy that there are no more sick people? Because when we came, people were admitted on benches. The rooms were filled. Bros, we are not happy. We left. I said, today we want to come manifest. And the Lord, is when we got home, the Lord said, you've done it. You just emptied the hospital. And I broke out and started praising him. I was 14 years old. Tell your neighbor, Ekala, you are too old to be given excuses why God cannot use you. And I, how, what did I know? Some of you have gone to theology, even have rheology, and uh, all, you don't need all those things. Just believe God. Tell your neighbor, believe God. Someone say, believe God. You don't even need an anointing. You don't need anything. You don't need commissioning. You have been commissioned. You just need to believe what God's word says. Look for those scriptures. And I'm, in one of the courses, I'm going to share some of them. Look for those healing scriptures. Meditate on them. Praise the Lord. And release them in Jesus' name. Wow. Okay. This took a little time, but I think the Lord was emphasizing something. Praise the Lord. So as God's children, we have a covenant right to the blessing which includes health. So when God blessed Abraham, one of the blessings was blessing of divine health. When you got saved, the Bible says you are delivered from the curse of the Lord, that the blessings of Abraham may come upon us, who are what? The Gentiles. That we may receive the promise, the spirit promised to Abraham through our what? Our faith. Someone say, I believe in the blessings of Abraham. I receive the blessings of Abraham. They are mine. They are working in my life. In Jesus' name. Can you say part of that blessing includes healing and health? That's the children's bread. I take my share and I will enjoy my life. Is your right to be healed? Is your right to walk in health? Healing is your right. Someone say it's my right. You don't need to beg God to heal you. Just take it. Somebody say, I take it. Someone say, I take it. It's mine. Say, I take it. It's mine. Say, I take it. I receive my healing. It's mine. It's my bread. I'm, I'm, I'm a child of Abraham. It's my right. So healing and health is your covenant right as a believer. You have a right to be healed. So you don't have to beg. Demand. Lord, touch me. Angels begin to walk. That's why you see what we used to say. Angels, move. We have a right. I wake up in the morning, I lay hands on myself, I say, body systems be normal in Jesus' name. And it will be normal. When we are small, there's this thing they call Terra Hawks. I don't know whether you watch that cartoon. When they are checking their system, they say, systems A-OK. Someone reply, A-OK. That's what I do. When I was young, bam, 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 bam. L systems A-OK. Systems A-OK. We move. Someone say, we move. In the house, I woke up one day. The body was feeling weak. He said, you better get up or I leave you. The body, the body, the body had to get up by force. <laughs> Stop begging God to heal you. It's your right. Ask for it. Do you know how my boy enters my room? David, when he knocks on the door, but, but you don't answer. But, 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 daddy, open the door. Is this guy the landlord of this? 
and we'll be tired that you don't open it. The knock will continue. Bo, 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 bo. Daddy, open the door. Is his right? Someone said he went to a president's house. They were taking permission. The child just walked, opened the door. No protocol. He said, where are you going? I want to see my daddy. They said, that's the president. He's your president. He's my daddy. Someone say, he's my father. Someone say, he's my father. Remember that song? I have a father. Almighty father. He is king of kings. And Lord of Lords, I have a father. Again, I have a father. Almighty Father. He is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I have a father. One more time. I have a father. Oh, Almighty Father. He of kings and lord of lords i have a father the bible says it is the father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom and everything that is in the kingdom can you just pray in the spirit for one minute healing is yours health is yours he says i wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health Stand on your right as a son and demand. I don't know what is that area you need healing. Talk to the Lord now. Demand it. Father, you said it's my right. I ask for my eyes to see. John chapter 14. Verse 14 says, Whatever you ask in my name, I will give it to you. The actual Greek says, Whatever you demand, Whatever you demand, in my name, I will give it to you. I don't know what you need. You may need a new eye. You may need a new ear. You may need a new tooth. You may need a new heart. Place a demand. When you place the demand, heaven will supply your order. There are body parts in heaven. There are body parts in heaven. If you need an eye, place another now for an eye. Everybody stand on your feet. God is releasing things. If you need an ear, place an order for an ear. If you need a new leg, place an order for a, a, a new leg. If you need replacement, if you need repair, place an order. Makata bakata. Shata bakata bakata kata. Healing is the children's bread. I place an order. I place an order for a new eye. If you need restoration, give an order. I command my eyes to see. I command my ears to hear. I command my mouth to speak. Lay hands on your body. Lay your hands on Lay hands on that leg. I command this leg to walk now. I have cancer. Lay hands on that breast. I command this cancer to die. Everywhere you are around the world, place another, place another, place another for what you need. Ask for a new eye. Ask for a new ear. Ask for a new heart. Ask your father. He's your father. He's your father. He loves you. He's your father. He's your father. It is the father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. It is the father's pleasure to give you a new eye. It is the father's pleasure to give you a new ear. It is the father's pleasure to give you a new womb. Woman, receive a new womb. Receive a new womb. Receive a new womb. Receive a new womb. Healing is a children's bread. I receive mine. I receive mine. Receive yours. Place a demand. Make a demand. Place another. Give another. John chapter 14, verse 12. John 14, verse 12. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he shall do also. And greater works than these will he do, because I go to my Father. 
Jesus was doing the works because he knew God was his father. He was placing demands from his father. He was asking for eyes, asking for ears, making commands. When your father sends you to steal, you break the door with boldness because you know he's behind you. Jesus had a revelation of the father. And that he said, he that sent me is with me. He has not left me what? Alone. He's backing me. That's why he said, the works I do, you shall do what? Also and greater. Somebody say greater works. Not because we are greater than him. But the population of the earth now is more. Technology is can reach billions. Those days it can just reach 5,000, 10,000. But now one message, you can reach billions. That's why he said greater works. I get what I'm saying. Now there is air travel. You can go so many places. In one day you can have seven services if you have a private jet. Don't mind the naysayers. When you are idle, you'll be complaining about private jet. Jet is a tool for work. In the morning, Kaduna, you move from Kaduna to Taraba. You enter your jet. You move to Abuja, another service. You move, you cross to Cameroon, another service. Evening service, South Africa. Next morning, you are in the U.S. It's idle people that complain about jets. They don't know what jet is for. Can a couple say that they did a service in China? Do you know how far China is? Because he rides the fastest civilian jet and flew back to the U.S. and had two meetings the same day. That is kingdom. Someone say kingdom. That's dominion. That's why you can do greater work. Population has increased. Technology. But it's still him in you doing the works. You are not greater than God, but you are doing it because he goes. He has gone back. He has handed over to you. Verse 13. And whatsoever. Somebody say whatsoever. Whatever you ask what in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be what glorified. If you demand that eyes be opened, Jesus will open the eyes. If you ask for a new eye, he will supply. You ask for a new ear, he will supply. Verse, 13, verse 14. This part has to do with asking. But look at verse 14. He said, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. That one, 13 is asking, making requests. You can ask for God to supply things. 14 is not asking. In the Greek, the word is demand. So I'll say demand. Leg, grow. Jesus said, when you say it, I will make sure it happens. Eyes, see. Ears, hear. I will back you to make sure it happens. I don't know what, whether you want to ask for something. What do you want to ask? Begin to ask. Jesus is backing you now. What do you want? What do you want? You want to see well. You want to hear well. You want to talk well. You want a new, new, new respiratory organs. You want new breasts. Ask the Father. Whatever you ask the Father in my name, I will do it. I will do it. I will supply it. Healing is the children's bread. It's your right. It's your right. It's your right. Begin to ask, 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 ask. Ask for yourself, ask for your parents. Lord, I ask, make my mom every witch hole. Every witch hole, every witch hole. Restore everything that has been destroyed. Restore everything that has been destroyed. Restore everything that has been Bring complete healing. Complete healing. Complete healing. Complete healing. Begin to replace. Begin to replace. Repeat to everything that has been destroyed. Brain cells that have been destroyed. Muscles that have been destroyed. Nerves that have been destroyed. Now begin to make some demand. Make some demand. Speak to your leg. Leg walk. Leg be healed. Leg be healed. I see. Hear, hear. Speak to your, speak, speak. Command that devil to leave your father. Command that spirit of madness to leave. Command the spirit of madness to live. Command the spirit of deafness. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out of my father. Come out of my mother. We rebuke cancer. We rebuke cancer. We rebuke cancer. Every spirit of cancer. Die in Jesus' name. Die in Jesus' name. Die.
Die in Jesus' name. Die in Jesus' name. Every cancer cell in people's breasts be cleared in the name of Jesus. In people's limbs be cleared in the name of Jesus. In people's blood be cleared in the name of Jesus. By the authority in the name of Jesus. Backed by my heavenly Father. Thank you, Father. I have a Father, Almighty Father. He is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I have why again. I have a Father. All he is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I have fire. again. I Lift your voice and declare it. I have a Father. All powerful Father. He's the King of all kings. Lord of every sickness. Lord of demons. Lord of angels. Let boldness enter you. Let confidence enter you. Let confidence in your father. He loves you. He will back you. Jesus said, He that sent me. Man of God, He that sent me is with me. That's the boldness we have when we step on shrines. He that sent me is with me and is greater than the shrine. When you go to any village, know that he that sent you is with you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? When you confront any demon in your family, know that he that sent you what is with you. He did not leave you what alone. The Bible said they went everywhere and preached, and God walked with them, confirming the words they preached with signs and what wonders from today. Every word you speak will be confirmed in the name of Jesus. It will be confirmed in the name of Jesus. As you go here, lay hands on the sick. Cast out demons. Heal the sick. Command eyes to see. Command ears to hear. Make demands. And you're going to have it in Jesus' name. Can we give Jesus some praise in the house? My God, there's so much fire in this healing school. When you go home today, go and look for trouble. Are you hearing me? Look for a sick person somewhere. You know, there's what they call troubleshooting. Troubleshooting is looking for trouble. In the house, after reading something about raising the dead, he asked the pastor, the Bible says we can raise the dead. Can we raise He said, so this thing I read is true. He said, yes, we can raise the dead. He said, yes. He asked him, pastor, have you raised the dead? The pastor said, no. But can I raise the dead? The pastor said, yes. The, the guy carried his Bible in one hand, entered his bicycle, and started going around beneath, looking for dead. He will come to a house, say, any dead person here? They say, no. Any dead person here? They say, no. At the time, they said, what are you using dead people for? Are you a witch? He said, no. My Bible says I can raise them up. And by evening, he bumped into a place and he heard a little girl had died. He started giving thanksgiving. Today, opportunity to do the word. He came there. Little girl had died. So he, he said, Lord, I have come. What do I do? He opened his Bible. What did Jesus do? He said, he chased away the mourners. He chased all the mourners. You don't need too much English. You have a manual. He said, all the mourners out. They went out. He said, hey, what is the other thing Jesus did? He said, Jesus called the child by name. He asked them, what is the name of the child? They said, the name is Inuata. Because he thought that Talita is the name of the child in the Bible. But Talita actually means little girl. But he said, the name of the child in the Bible is Talita. So what is the name of the child? They say Inuata. So he came. What did Jesus do? Jesus said, Inuata, in, in Talita Kumi. Do you know what he said? Inuata Kumi. And Inuata sneezed and came back to life. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah! Dead people will be rising everywhere in the name of Jesus. Then he went back to the Bible. What is the nurse? He said they gave him to the parents. He 
asked them to give the child food and water. He gave back to the parents and had to give him food and water. And that was his first testimony of raising the dead. And history has it that over 19 people were raised from dead in Idohosa's ministry, including one that happened in Ghana that made the president give him a national award. The man fell from a building, broke his head, the skull, the brain poured out and died. He came there. He gathered the brain into the skull and closed it and saying that they must be healed and be raised. And the guy came back to life. God is raising a radical generation today. I say a radical generation today of miracle workers in the name of Jesus. People that have confidence in their heavenly father. People that know that healing and health is their covenant word right. From today, go out with boldness in the name of Jesus. Ask in boldness, receive in boldness, perform in boldness, and everybody said amen. amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Wow, there's so much fire in this place. Tomorrow when you are coming, don't come alone. Go and let every Christian you can. Invite your friend. Invite your neighbor. We want this whole